A huge headline right now. We see Pope Benedict XVI just moments ago making this historic announcement. He's speaking in Latin to a group of cardinals and announcing his resignation. After having repeatedly examined my conscience before God, he said, I have come to the certainty that my strengths due to an advanced age are no longer suited to an adequate exercise of the Petrine ministry. I am well aware that this ministry, due to its essential spiritual nature, must be carried out not only by words and deeds, but no less with prayer and suffering. The last pope to resign was Pope Gregory XII. That was almost 600 years ago. Benedict's decision to resign sets the stage, of course, for the Vatican to hold a conclave to elect a new pope by mid-March. That would mean a new pope would be in place just before Easter, Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, the 40-day period leading up to Easter begins this week. So, of course, it's a crucial, probably the most important 40 days in the Catholic calendar. Most significant spiritual period. That's right. Let's bring in Dan Harris for more on this right now. Has covered the Pope issues of religion for ABC News. And even though there had been speculation for some time that the Pope was in failing health, this was still something of a surprise. Vatican officials holding a briefing just now saying they were, in fact, very surprised by this. But as you say, there were some signs. The Pope himself admitting that at times in recent months he'd been tired. And, in fact, at one point he said that he was in the final leg of the path of my life. And in 2010, he fueled some speculation around the possibility of resignation when he wrote in his book that uh, light in uh, the book was called Light of the World. He said if he no longer felt physically, psychologically and spiritually capable of carrying out the duties of office, the right and in some circumstances the obligation is to resign. Still a highly unusual move. As Elizabeth said, it hasn't happened in almost 600 years. The key phrase in the Pope's comments this morning, he said he is making this decision and announcement with full freedom. And the Vatican emphasizing that point this morning because in, his, in the history of this church, in the very long history of this church, there have been concerns over time that popes will be forced to resign, pressured to resign. So this pope emphasizing quite strongly this morning he's doing this of his own free will. And so much of his papacy over the last eight years dealing with the fallout of the sexual abuse scandal worldwide. There is no question this is an issue that has threatened to define his papacy. Uh, there have been questions, renewed questions, while he's been serving about how he handled this issue when he was archbishop in Germany and when he was a top Vatican official under the prior pope. Uh, in 2008, in April of 2008, he came to the United States. I covered that visit, and he met personally with victims of sexual abuse here in the United States. A very emotional moment. Okay, Dan Harris, I'm sure you'll be covering this all day long. Yeah. Let's bring in Father John Walk. He's on the phone right now, an Opus Dei priest and a professor of literature at the Pontifical University of the Holy Cross in Rome. And Father Walk, thank you for joining us this morning. Your first reaction? It's a pleasure to be on. Father Walk, your first reaction to this news? Father Walk, hi, it's George Stephanopoulos here in New York. I was just wanting to get your initial reaction to the news that Pope Benedict has resigned. Obviously, uh, it's, a, it's a great surprise uh, for the whole church, for everyone in the Vatican, and I think for the whole Catholic world. But uh, at the same time, it's not uh, completely surprising, given uh, what the Pope had already written about the possibility of resigning. And it's clear that in terms of his uh, mental capacities, he's in, he's in excellent shape. He's very sharp. And so when, when he says he's taking this, you know, making this decision with full freedom, uh, it's clear that that's, that's the case. And what makes, that makes one believe that this is an act that he's taking out of a sense of responsibility and, and love for the church. And setting such a significant precedent in some ways, because in modern times at least, many popes had taken the position that this is an office that could not be resigned. I think that uh, the, the phrase in the pope's statement about his awareness that his role is one that's above all spiritual and carried out also through suffering was meant to respond to that, that he, he's well aware that what John Paul II did, for instance, which was stay in office until the, the very end, suffering physically uh, in an extreme and public way, was perfectly legitimate. What he's saying, though, is that given the situation of the world today, and, and as you look back over his... his such that he's not able to... Uh, yes. uh, oh, more. Excuse me, Father, and as you look back over his papacy, what will he be remembered most for? I think that he's going to be remembered, above all, as, uh, as a teaching pope. 
for his, his encyclicals, for his books about the life uh, of Jesus. Uh, those have been extremely popular books, and uh, he's obviously an extremely profound theologian, and it will take years to, uh, to unpack all of the, the profundity uh, of Benedict's thought. So he's done a great service to the Church already, and, and his service to John Paul II in his years as Pope. Father John Walk, thank you very much. And as part of that teaching ministry, the first pope to have an account on Twitter. He was the first pope to tweet. But it's important to note that Pope Benedict is 85 years old. Pope John Paul II was 84 when he died. And we learned after his death that twice during his papacy, he considered resigning mm -hmm. because of his ill health. And of course, this sets up in a hugely, uh, often in history, political process with the conclave electing the next pope.